what it did, what it do, and what it does. And this is your boy, The Sounds of the Rain, and I want to welcome you to another episode of The Sounds of the Rain podcast. I believe this is episode 18 of the podcast, and the topic that we're going to discuss today, um, I don't even know if it's really considered a topic, uh, but we're going to talk about a recent milestone that I hit. Um, the YouTube channel just hit 3,000 subscribers. Um, so what I want to do is just kind of talk about um, the journey of YouTube, uh, how it started, uh, when it started, you know, um, how I feel about it, how it's going and, you know, what I plan to do, uh, going forward. Um, so first off, this milestone was hit a couple days ago and, and I'm happy to say that I, I think I crossed the threshold with my, um, my recent look into my eyes, uh, freestyle that I did and uh it's over the bone thugs and harmony look into my eyes beat you can check that out now uh the week prior to that I, I dropped a freestyle over the exhibit beat x um and actually next week I will be doing a freestyle over the uh, Justin Timberlake like I love you um that was recommended by the homie Eric Barati who's a friend of the show shout out to Eric um, shout out to Pure Genius uh, Management, you know, shout out to West Nile. But, um, yeah, so 3,000 subscribers and their threshold was crossed with that particular video. Now, the significance of that is because a lot of the um, my recent subscribers, and forgive me if I'm talking kind of slow right now. I'm trying to get to my YouTube channel on my phone so I can get some stats. Uh but the significance of that is because a lot of the subscribers that I have, especially on a consistent basis, that kind of trickle in, um, are re <clears throat> excuse me, are results of uh, some some shorts that I put up uh, that came from uh, Busy Bone, um, his channel. So I, I I he'll do these lives, and so I screen recorded uh, some of the video. And then I um, would edit them uh, and then put the videos up, you know. And uh, a lot of people continue to watch those videos, comment on them. I think two of them are like at 100K each. Um, and so part of, part of me actually didn't even want to bring up or, you know, kind of celebrate this 3,000 subscribers because of that. Because it's like, you know, maybe I feel like, hey, I didn't earn it or I cheated. Or, you know, because I'd even taken those videos down for a while. Um, but then I put them back up. I was like, you know what? Uh, these are videos on my channel. People enjoy watching them. I've, you know, pointed people to Busy's channel. So it's not like I'm just, like, trying to steal his, uh, his viewers or anything like that. So, you know what? I'm going to put them back up. And so I did. And so, you know, I'm proud of the accomplishment because all of my 3000 subscribers haven't come from those, those busy videos. Um, I've got quite a few, uh, videos, um, on my channel and I'm so sorry. If y'all could see what I was doing right now, it would make sense while my speech sounds so broken and I'm like, you know, talking like this. But, um, okay, so my oldest video was eight years ago. So I started my YouTube channel eight years ago was in 2015. And my first video was the prelude. Uh, that was, uh, that was very significant for me because that was my introduction back into music. Um, after I had stopped, um, I had taken a, a long hiatus and I had decided that, you know what, I'm ready to get back into it. Um, at this point I was, you know, beginning my career as a solo artist. Um, and so I had changed my name from Shamrock to Sound of the Rain. And the prelude was the first song that I put out, uh, written by me, produced by me, recorded by me, mixed and mastered by me all that first time, uh, and it was it was quite an experience. And as of now, that particular song is at uh, 
228 views. Um, and then the next video I didn't put out for another year. <clears throat> and that was 2000, excuse me, that was How We Roll, which was another Christian rap song produced by myself. And then the next video I didn't put out until a year after that. Now, I don't know if this is like exactly a year after, but I'm just looking at like my oldest videos and it says like eight years ago, seven years ago, six years ago. Um, and then after that, it was a reaction to a WandaVision video that was two years ago. That can't be right. I don't know. So I guess it's been about two years since I've really, um, really been trying to kind of get it popping on my YouTube channel. Uh, my most popular videos, <clears throat> excuse me. So my most popular videos are my how to make, uh, the perfect air fryer bacon, uh, and the power XL air fryer, which has 29,000 views. Um, my second most popular video is how to make, a steak in an air fryer um, with the Power Excel air fryer, which has 15,000 views. And then my third highest video is Crazy World, a tribute to Crazy Bone of Both Bone Thugs and Harmony, which has 14,000 views. Um, so those are my top three videos. So to be honest, I, I really should have stuck with the cooking, um, the cooking direction on the channel um to to be totally honest i matter of fact i know if i'd stuck with doing what i was doing i would probably be a lot farther off than i am now the reason i one reason that i didn't is because i actually merged this account with my um my artists i made this as an artist account a musical account if i hadn't done that at that point when i made those videos i would have uh switched it all over to food and then made another account. But the way it works is that, uh, through my, um, through my distributor, whenever I upload a song and it goes to YouTube, it'll automatically go to my channel. So they're like connected. And so just so to not throw that off, that's the only reason I've kind of continued this musical journey with this channel. But to be honest, food is that would be my, like, the thing that I would love to do as far as, like, YouTube. Um, it's a lot of hard work, though, especially how I was doing it with um, the Sound Bites channel where I was, like, making videos of food, and then I would make, like, songs for them. But the, it's funny, that bacon video, I'm proud of the success of that because it was very intentional. The thumbnail... The title, um, the actual video itself, the editing of it, the pacing of it, all of it was very intentional to, to meet the success that it did. Um, and it worked. Um, and so people still watch it. But I imagine people that watch it and subscribe to me based off of that are like, hey, this dude ain't really got too many uh, <laughs> too many food videos, um, which is true. Matter of fact, my fourth biggest video is um is a video I made where Busy Bone was talking. He's breaking down his verse from uh, first of the month, and I made a video about that. I edited it and everything, made the thumbnail. That got ten thousand views. Uh, then there's a video that got eight point eight thousand views uh, where Busy is breaking down his verse from the Crossroads. Um, then after that is how to make the best brownies, peanut butter cookies, peanut butter cookie brownies is a video I did with my daughters. They got 6.4 thousand. So that was still when I was on that food kick. Um, then after that is 4,000 views is uh busy breaking down his verse on down 71. Um, and then after that is 1.9 thousand views is a clip from um, Little Easy E's podcast where he was inter interviewing DJ Unique. And DJ Unique was talking about how um, first in a month almost didn't make it onto East 1999 Eternal. It was one of their biggest songs, and they almost didn't make the song. So that is a song that, uh, that is a video that got a lot of views as well. So I'm trying to right now look at the stats for the, uh, 
for the bacon video because it's bigger than just like views with YouTube. It's also about like how long is the video being viewed? You know, when are people uh, dropping out on it? Um, and so there's an application called uh, YouTube Studio, which you can see the analytics uh, for your content. And so with, oh, wow. So with this bacon video, 78% of viewers are still watching at around the 30 mark, the, around the 30 second mark, which is high. Um, I think that's pretty successful because people will drop out um, usually a lot earlier. But then with this video, the audience retention rate on average for the lifetime of the video is 45.2%. So for a minute and 58 seconds. So 45.2% of the people that watch this video are watching a minute and 58 seconds of it. So it doesn't mean like they're watching it up to the minute and 58 second point and then they just stop. What it means is they could be skipping through, um, you know, things like that. But that is what it is like for that. And I've gotten 955 hours of watch time from this video and 104 subscribers. Um, so watch time, the importance of that is uh, to be able to get your channel monetized. You have to hit a certain amount of watch time hours. And I haven't met that threshold yet. I've met the threshold for subscribers, which is a thousand. But I, t I honestly haven't been really putting in the work to reach the threshold um, for uh, for the watch time hours. Um, but you can see 955 hours, um, 104 subscribers. Imagine if I kept making videos like that. You know what I'm saying? That's where I would have... Uh, that's where I would have gone. Um, let me see. So the steak video. That's 543 hours of watch time. And I've gotten 61 subscribers uh, from that video. 67% uh, of viewers are watching this video around the 30 second mark, which is which is still really good. Um and then 38.3% are watching about two minutes of this video. This one wasn't as good, as strong as the bacon video, but it was still like a, a how-to. People are always going to want to know how to make something or how to do something. And so people come for instructions and tutorials. Those are some of the best videos um, to make on YouTube. They're, it's called evergreen content, content that will always uh, have relevance to it. So Crazy World, and I remember, I know some people have probably thought or wondered if I bought bots or paid for subscriptions. I'm going to make this very, very clear. I am a husband and a father of seven, okay? We all live in the same house, all seven children providing for them, and my wife. We all, we're all working together. I can't afford to pay nobody to, <laughs> to, I can't afford to pay for nothing extra in regards to my content creation. So I can't afford to pay for no bots. I can't afford to pay for no fake subscriptions for all these people that be reaching out to me like, you know, oh, do you want, you know, advertising? I can't, I can't afford to pay for that either. But I just want to make that clear because a friend of mine, I remember when Crazy World was blowing up, he said he went and looked at the comments like, I guess to see if there was like, if it was bots, I was like, what kind of hater? Like <laughs> you could have just asked me that, but I digress. So, um, crazy world has a total of 14,266 views, um, 486 hours of watch time and 127 subscribers I've gotten from crazy world. Uh, audience retention is 66 percent of viewers are still watching around a 30 second mark so that first 30 seconds is when you got to kind of reel them in or bring them in uh to your content or to your video and then um the retention rate is uh two minutes and two seconds um 47.4 percent of viewers so you know, that's good. And in the last 48 hours, I've gotten 10 views um, 
from this video, uh, from this song. And yeah, one of these busy, busy videos only got 44 subscribers. Um, let me see if I can tell how many, uh, subscribers, subscribers I got from those busy shorts. Okay, so one of these busy shorts where he's saying his favorite verse off of the East 1999 album has 114,000 views. Uh, the one where Busy Spits Days of Our Lives have Days of Our Lives has 109,000 views, and then um, the one where Busy is singing has 29,000 views. So let me see. Okay, so. I've got 386 subscribers from the uh, the Busy Short, the um, the one where he said what his favorite verse was on East 1999. Um, 579 subscribers from the uh, the Busy Bone. Uh, where he spits his Days of Our Lives verse acapella. So uh, that's, I probably could keep going. I probably, probably about a good half of my subscribers. It probably, even if maybe more, have come from uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony content. You know, so I could really segue my channel into um, a Bone channel and also sharing uh, my music, which is essentially what I, I kind of plan on doing. I, I have some ideas and some direction I'm going. Um, right now, it's just a matter of not having the time or, or making the time. I'm trying to build a level of consistency. So that's why recently, uh, for the past two weeks, um, my focus is drop a freestyle and drop an episode of the podcast. I didn't feel like recording this episode of the podcast, but for the sake of some consistency, I wanted to do it. Matter of fact, it's a day late. But um, so two weeks ago, Three weeks ago, I put out a song called Some Bars, and um, I put that out, and that was just really, that was really to kind of get my feet wet, you know what I'm saying? Like, just kind of, I, I just have been out of the mood of writing creatively, and I'm still kind of in a rut, but these freestyles are kind of helping building those, the juices back. It's like exercise and the consistency of it, and so... The week after that, I had already written another verse, um, but I talked to a friend of mine, um, shout out to the homie Mac the Black Sheep, and he had gave me some feedback regarding the production on some bars. Um, and when I, I literally threw that beat together in like seconds, you know what I'm saying? It was just, I wanted to put it over something original so I could put it on a distro, distro kid to distribute it, um, to sell it. But, um, so the next one I did, I said, okay, let me do it over um, an industry or an established beat. So I uh, I did it over the Exhibit X beat. And I didn't even write it to that beat. I listened to I, I I listened to a bunch of different instrumentals and was spitting it over them, and that was instrumental to me that I felt like it was just coming off the best. So I put that out. Then the next week. Um, I did a freestyle over Look Into My Eyes, and this was the first time I had announced, which I'm going to start doing on Sunday, as I'll say what's coming up, you know, the next week on Sound of the Rain. Um, so the Look Into My Eyes freestyle, I actually wrote it over the beat. Um, I put that out, and then I'm recording this episode of the podcast. And like I said, next week is going to be the Justin Timberlake beat, and then I'll have another episode of the podcast. So that's going to be, you know, a few weeks of consistency which is good for me because it's, it's, it's building that repetition and building that habit. And that's what my main focus is right now on the channel. Um, because I think I do have the opportunity to, uh, be able to monetize my YouTube channel, um, and to be able to make extra money, um, and, and maybe eventually even, you know, start a career with it. Um, it's just a matter of me, you know, being consistent and kind of having a game plan with it. Um, and I actually plan on um, joining Roberto Blake's um, awesome creator academy, you know what I'm saying, to, get, to really get some, like, uh, direction. And, you know, if he sits down with me and looks at my channel and is like, you know, yo, I see this is where you're going. This is what's working for you. This is the direction you need to take. 
whatever he says, I'm going to do it because he's, he's proven. He's very smart. Um, he's successful. He has results. And he's the homie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I have a lot of respect and admiration for him. So, uh, and, and and once I hit and reach that point, like, I don't care what anybody says. Like, as far as, like, outside voices, you know, you know, kind of trying. I ain't going to say I don't care because I always listen to people. You know what I'm saying? I'm at that point in my life where um, I try not to. If someone reaches out to, to, especially depending on the person that it is, and also the delivery, and that also matters from the person as well. You know what I'm saying? But I can hear somebody talk about something and not agree with them, but I'll listen to them and I'll take what they said and I'll kind of even digest it and see what I how I can use it and can apply it. Or if I feel like you know what this is trash, I'll throw it in the recycling bin. But I you know and keep it moving. Um, so that's really the the plan that I have as far as the channel um, taking and getting more uh, direction with it um, is actually signing up for Roberto's uh, class. Um, but yeah, you know, so, and, and I also want to talk about this. Uh, you got to celebrate your wins. And sometimes that requires you taking a look back and seeing like, man, I did this or man, I did that. And like, it might be something little, you know what I'm saying? But, like, you did that. You know what I'm saying? Like, somebody might look at it, oh, you got all them subscribers from from Bone Videos, blah, blah. Well, guess what? I got 3,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, meaning that whenever I put up a video, it's possibly going to be uh, targeted and marketed towards 3,000 people. How many people you got on your channel? Do you have a channel? You know what I'm saying? So instead of letting people make you feel bad about the things that you've done, I'm proud of my 3,000 subscribers because those videos that I put out, I took the time to screen record them. I took the time to edit them. I put jokes inside of them. I took the time to post them. I took the time to make the thumbnail. I took the time to put the, the title and all that stuff. People have no idea, no idea the, the man hours and the time that I spend working on this stuff, man, or that I have in the past because I haven't really been uh, doing it. I've been dealing with some health challenges the past couple of months, and it's really been uh, <clears throat> kind of mentally debilitating. I don't even know if that's the right word, but it's been hard, you know. Um, but, yeah, success, celebrate your wins, man. If, if you if you put a song up on uh, YouTube and two people listen to it and you get a thumbs up and a comment, a one comment, man, that's an accomplishment. That's one person that listen to your song like, yo, this is hot. You know, if 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 20 people listen to you, if you get 20 views, that's a classroom full of people. Imagine that, 20. 20 people sitting in a room. Or it was 10 people that liked it so much they listened to it twice. You see what I'm saying? So don't downplay your accomplishments and don't downplay your success and don't downplay your wins. You got to celebrate those and you got to be proud of them, you know? And that's where I'm at. I'm proud of the work that I did. I'm proud of the work that I put in. Look. I'm telling you, man, I started I started back this journey of trying to make music and put stuff out within in 2021, 2021. And within my first year of doing my thing, my favorite artist reached out to me and asked me to work with him. And that's a story for another day. But think about that in one year. That little, so imagine the work that I put in two years from now, three years from now, four years from now, five years from now. Imagine the growth and, and the things that I will have done, the things I will have accomplished in, in, in that in that frame of mind or in that you know time frame or what have you. You know what I'm saying? You got you gotta uh, you gotta be proud of yourself because sometimes ain't nobody else gonna be proud of you, and then sometimes the people that is proud of you. They're low-key jealous of you. And sometimes it's not they're jealous of the success you got. They're jealous of the fact that you have the balls to go out there and do it. You got the balls to go out there and fail. You got the balls to go out there and uh, keep putting up stuff, even when nobody notices it, even when nobody 
comments on it or ain't nobody gives you a thumbs up. You keep pushing. You keep sharing. You keep uh, broadcasting and saying, hey, I got this. And people, sometimes they look back and, and they're mad because they gave up on their dream. They're sad because they gave up on their dream. I'm 43 years old. 43. And one day I will be able to say that my music is providing for my family straight up i won't be working a nine to five i won't be in somebody's office it, i will be in my home making music and i and i i don't care if it takes until i'm 50 years old and i'll still be able to hang with these young bucks just trying to rhyme you know what i'm saying because this is something that all comes from the mental you know and if you Continue to practice that craft and practice that skill. To me, it don't matter how old you are. You still should be able to hang. You know what I'm saying? Jay-Z's in his 50s. Eminem is 50. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the members of Bone, they in their 50s. You know? And still, still spitting fire. Snoop Dogg just turned 52. And I, uh, he was playing some music on um, Instagram Live the other day. And it was fire. So so don't don't give me that about I'm I'm too old. No, Paula Dean started making bag lunches for construction workers when she was 40 years old. 40, and that's how she started her empire. Now, despite, you know, the fall that she had, that's that's that that's irrelevant because the success that she had, the steps she took to gain it and attain it didn't start until she was 40 years old. You know? So I'm going to go ahead and cut this episode. Um, I hope that you enjoy it. I thank you for listening. Um, I appreciate you. Look at this. This is another week of consistency. You know, the podcast is going to be more geared towards y'all getting to know me. So it's not going to be just about me talking about music and talking about um, my content creation and my journey. No, I might make a, a, a come up here and have an episode where I'm just... Talking about what's my favorite food. This is the Sound of the Rain podcast, and Sound of the Rain gonna talk about whatever you want to talk about. And if you listen to my music and you you enjoy my content, or you on my you know any of my my uh, platforms, you can get to know me. You know what I'm saying? And uh, hope you have a great day. Hope you have a great weekend. I got plenty of music out there. Go follow me on Spotify. Um, Breakdown is available. Uh, some bars is available. Leave them alone. Rough Mix is available. Um, Crazy World is available. Uh, just Spit, uh, Just Rap, Spitter's Anthem is available. Tons of stuff. Just look up Sound of the Rain. Just Google it. S O U N D space O of space T H E space R A I G N. And you'll find everything you're looking for. Uh, Jesus is King. I hope you have a beautiful day. Peace.